I have the greatest job in the world. I take care of my spiritual leaders. Years ago, I was planning on being a veterinarian, so I like to say, like most doctors, I have a bachelor's in agriculture, but uh, actually, withdrew from the vet school because my mom said, maybe you ought to be a pediatrician. So, went to medical school, and to be honest with you, it was a challenge for me. It was a real challenge for me. I felt like it was almost strangling the life out of me because I wasn't getting to spend too much time with people, particularly children, which is what I had done a lot of as we'd had about 150 foster children over 20 years in our home. Well, interesting thing happened. At one point, I got called out by the chairman of our department where I was training, and he said, Chuck, I'm concerned. I'm afraid you're going to get the reputation of being a maverick. Even before you start practicing, I'm afraid you're going to be called a maverick. I wasn't exactly sure. I thought, I'm pretty sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But uh, ironically, what I discovered was that my training in medicine, going to medical school and doing my residency made me more knowledgeable, but my patients made me wiser. I learned a lot from the children that I worked with. I take care of children who are the just they're on the edge of life and death. I take care of kids who have life-threatening illnesses. Children, in fact, I was the director of, the medical director of pediatric hospice for a number of years. And that had a profound impact on me. What I learned from the kids was this. I need to get rid of the barriers. So let's start by not having the white coat. That might be a good start. You know, I see at the children's hospital, on occasion I see signs up in the windows of the patient's room that says, please do not wear your white coat. I have yet to see a sign that said, please wear your white coat. So it seems to me we could do without. I also found that when I interacted closely with these children and allowed them to take me to some pretty difficult places, a lot of spiritual growth happened. I once had a mother say to me, are you aware of the energy in the room when you're with my son? And I said, yes, I am, and that's why I do what I do. So I decided to tear up the box. Perhaps I am a practice practicer of maverick medicine, and I began to think inside the bag. I like the traditional look of the old bag, and I got on, I'm the only doctor actually who carries one at my hospital. Got on the elevator one day and the lady said, can I see what you have in there? She goes, you don't know how comforting it is to us to see that some of you still carry these bags. I said, sure. Have a whoopee cushion, <laughs> have a pro wrestling mask, I have some magic tricks. Why would I have those things in a doctor bag? Well, typically we have the diagnostics in here. We have the sorts of things that we have to have to evaluate a child. But most important, what motivates a child? Well, years ago I had a little boy in my hospital named Jeremy. He had survived a house fire, a very bad house fire, had caused burns over most of his body. Now. I needed Jeremy to use his fingers. I needed him to move his hands. How could I motivate Jeremy to do that? So what I discovered was I could start with some magic tricks. Now, I have to tell you, I'm not a good magician, but the good news is the kids aren't real discriminating as an audience. <laughs> Hopefully you aren't either. I needed Jeremy to do magic. I needed him to use his hands. And at first we start with one hand magic, and then we go to two hand magic, and I said, hey, Jeremy, here, do this, okay? We got three ropes. They're all the same length. We put those together, we blow on it, and whoa, hey, amazingly, they're three different lengths. So Jeremy learns to do magic. The other kids came to me in the hospital and said, Dr. Chuck, show me how to do magic. I said, no, 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 I'm not the magician. Jeremy is. Now remember, I just told you, Jeremy had these terrible burns all over his body. He looks like a mummy. He's wrapped, he's got pressure wraps all over his body. He was scary looking to the other kids. So now the children had to go to Jeremy to learn how to do magic. And guess what? They discovered that just like him, 
just like him and themselves, their children. And he began to get a supporting group of patients around him. And he would teach them magic. So it had a great dual purpose. Now, more recently, I went into the intensive care unit. I saw this 12-year-old boy. He was obviously the center of attention. People flying around him, respiratory therapists, nurses, everybody working. He's totally paralyzed. He's lying in the bed, the only thing moving his eyes. And he looked scared. Now, there was a young volunteer there, a Susie, and I apologize to you, Susie, because I didn't have time to prepare you for this. But Susie was volunteering that day, trying to play some games with him, but he's pretty anxious. I walk in, I take a look at him, and I said, I know what we need to do. Pull out the whoopee cushion, put a little bit of air in it. I said, Susie. She turned bright red. <laughs> that same little guy who was lying there paralyzed, suddenly he's lying there belly laughing, and suddenly he's the life of the party, not just the center of attention. That's not such an uncomfortable situation. Now, what other sorts of things might we find in the bag of magic medicine? Well, you know what, kids? Kids, they just can't let those bubbles fall to the ground because you pop. Oh, on occasion, they don't pop. And you see, that's an important thing for them to realize too. <laughs> that's very important. Things aren't always the way they appear or the outcomes are not always the way they appear. So, I love to turn that around and go like, I look at the little child on the bed and go, how did you do that? I'm supposed to be the magician. How did you do that? Well, what I've learned from the children is healing is mutual. I am a better person when I'm around the children that I take care of. They've made me a better doctor, but I'm a better person when I'm around these children. Kylie Toy was a little girl I met Years and years ago, she was two years old. Kylie has cerebral palsy that affects the right side of her body. So that right side didn't work quite right. Yet she was courageous enough to play soccer and to run track. Now, when I say run track, I'm thinking I'd just run the 100 meters and then I could step off the track. Nobody needs to know I was there. Kylie ran the half mile and the quarter mile, and she always finished. And I remember at one point, I was still playing a lot of sports myself. She came in to see me one time when she's about nine or 10 years old. We would always hug each other. She'd say, don't tell the other doctors, but you're my favorite doctor. And I'd whisper to her, don't tell the other patients, but you're my favorite patient. I said, Kylie, are you still playing sports? She said, yeah, I'm still playing soccer. I said, aren't you running track? She said, oh yeah, guess what, Dr. Chuck? I don't get last anymore. And I remember that was such a valuable lesson for me. I'm not competing anymore. These children have taught me just to be quite content, to be participating. In fact, ideally, I'm their cheerleader. I'm their supporter. I'm creating arenas where these kids get a chance, despite their disability, to show their ability. Now, I had a great reward this past year. Kylie, who 20-some years later, when, from when I first met her, gets to travel with me. She's not just walking and running in the village of Ecuador, in the village there. She's working with me healing children. That's what this work is about. Margie Luna was another friend of mine. As I say, my patients are friend of mine, friends of mine that happen to be in predicaments. Margie, I met her when she was about 16 years old. She was diagnosed with a very, very bad form of cancer. She was going to have her wish granted by the Indiana Children's Wish Fund. They were going to buy her a Versace gown for the prom. Now, all of us guys are like, Versace gown. The women are going, that makes sense to me. Margie, though, changed her mind. 
I had come back. I had just been working in India in March of 1997. I'm sprinting down the cancer treatment area, trying to get to clinic. A nurse yells, Margie, that's the doctor that met Mother Teresa. And this beautiful, bald-headed girl jumps out of her recliner. She grabs her IV pole, chases me down, and says, tell me about Mother. Immediately, Margie and I connected. She became like a daughter to me. I always wonder, what does it feel like to love a daughter? Margie taught me that. Margie changed her mind. She didn't want the Versace gown anymore. She wanted to go with me to India to take care of Mother Teresa's children. And that she did. In February of 1998, Margie went to me to Cal- with me to Calcutta and helped take care of Mother's children in the orphanage. Shortly after we came back from that trip, Margie had a fracture of the hip. We knew the cancer was back. It was a difficult time for all of us. And I remember sitting with Margie in her home. We'd cried some. We talked. She said, I promise you, Dr. Chuck, I'll be your guardian angel. I said, I promise you, Margie, we will take care of the children in Quito, Ecuador, which was her hometown. And so to this day, Timmy Global Health's greatest efforts are in Ecuador. So, One other thing that I mentioned, I carry a pro wrestling mask or two or three in my bag. Why would I carry a pro wrestling mask? Well, I need to empower these kids the first time I see them. I don't want to just diagnose. I want to make a difference. I want them to see that they have this power to heal themselves, perhaps, to make a difference in their own lives. So I might go into the room, and initially, these children may not be able to move at all. It's a scary situation, as I mentioned before. In the ICU, maybe they're quadriparatic or quadriplegic. They can't move their arms and legs. But maybe we can start with just thumb wrestling. And then guess what? We start to see there's some strength coming back. Now we're doing arm wrestling. And now I'm challenging them. When you get out of this hospital, you got to get in the squared circle. you got to come up with a name. We're going to get you in there, and you're going to show your ability. So thumb wrestling to arm wrestling. And then we took the opportunity to get them in the ring. And as you can see, they are a force to be dealt with. Now, I have a little guy that was at our hospital not too long ago. He had a very bad spinal cord injury, very high, could not move at all. Couldn't even breathe, had a trach in. Eventually, he starts to move. We're getting to the point where I'm starting to challenge him, and I said, we're going to wrestle in about three months. I said, no, you're getting pretty strong pretty fast. We better make it two months or I won't stand a chance. And then we said, well, what are we, what's going to be your name? Well, he's got the trach in. He can't speak. The nurse said, how about silent but deadly? <laughs> so whenever I introduced him to the athletes that would come to see him, I'd go, Anthony Costanzo, I want you to meet John Son of the Deadly Rogers. And he'd go. <laughs> we also have dolphin therapy. Took care of this beautiful little girl. I went in to see her one day. She had very bad cancer. She and her parents were not expecting her to live much longer. But when I went to the bedside, I looked down and I said, Hello, Abby. I'm Dr. Chuck. She said, hi, did you know there are freshwater dolphins? (laughs) A girl after my own heart. I said, yes, do you know what color they are? And she said, pink. And I said, I love you. I just, you know. So in honor of her, we started a dolphin therapy program at the zoo. This is the reward for some of the kids. When you are done, and that's why I like to hand out these nice dolphin keychains from Guatemala, you are going to go and you're going to work with the dolphins. CHAMP camp, another big thing. CHAMP, acronym for children have a lot of motivation and potential. 1990, two visionary people said, we need to create something like this. We need to allow children who are on ventilators, who can't even breathe, to get out and live. Well, how do you do that? They weren't even going home at the time. They were living in the hospital. So they go to 
the camp. They'd go horseback riding, fishing, swimming. We were doing all kinds of cool stuff. At the end of the camp, I said, how do we make camp better next year? And I'd record it on a little micro cassette recorder. I hold it down there. Erin looks up and says, I'm thinking she's going to say s'mores every night. She says, hot air balloons and race cars. <laughs> Those are the people I want to hang out with. So as you can see, we now have hot air balloons that are wheelchair accessible. And we have race cars, as she had requested. On occasion, yeah, there's a need for that sometimes. On occasion, <laughs> what I find with these children, you just got to put them in the arena. You create the stage where children with disabilities show their abilities, where they make us better. They made me a better doctor, but I will tell you this, when I am in their presence, I'm a better person. These kids have taught me a lot about life, love, compassion, giving, sacrificing, and losing some of the battles. But let me tell you this, if you come to a camp where these kids are making it happen, you come and hang out with me at the hospital sometime, meet some of these heroes. You'll meet someone like Becky right there in the race car as she's getting ready to drive this car. Now, Becky can't take a breath on her own. She grabs the steering wheel with one hand. She bags herself with the Ambu bag with the other, and we're off and running. So let me suggest Get close to these kids, take the risk. You'll find out that you'll find compassion, inspiration. They don't just blow air into their own lungs, they'll blow life into yours, and you'll have a wonderful life because of it. Thank you very much.